think taking heart and continue on your journey in peace. Your spiritual state has everything to do with the outcome of your aspirations and actions. When you begin a task with antagonistic feelings or resistance, you have already lost. Bringing the warmth of hope and optimism to all of to all to all you do and success will be inevitable. Let's close our eyes. Take a deep breath in out. Trying to relax. Try to connect with the divine source with our spiritual guides with our mentors trying to elevate our thoughts open our hearts mind trying to leave all the problems all the negativity and just to think about love, compassion, and try to think about happiness. And it's with this vibration and this energy of love that we initiate our spiritual Sunday lecture. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Flavia. So, as always, we do the, the opening of the gospel according to Spiritism, randomly, right? To get an inspiration for what we talk about today. And today is a topic that um, visits us often, which is the one mind, many lives experience. I don't know, guys, I wish, I wish I could um, bend, uh, grasp the size of this concept. Many people, uh, it, when, you, when you superficially think about the life that never ends, right, that we have spirits, um, I think most people at least get the, the concept, even if you don't believe, even if you think it's just like a one passage, you're only in one body, right? And this is it, right? Um, even if even if that's the case, the spiritual life kind of uh, is a concept that you can entertain, right? But the consequence of our lives being just a part in a big, big journey is night and day. It's night and day. That's why talking about reincarnation, talking about this life that never ends and this experience that keeps coming back, and this is not the only time we have been here, that we have been here before, and that we're going to be here many, many more, more times, as many times as we need, until we complete our learning, our, our growth, right? If you understand that, if, if that's a concept that finds a place in your heart, your life's completely different, right? The difference between a person that believes this is it, this is my shot, this is the only life I have, this is my opportunity, this is it. I have like, I don't know, 10, 20, 30, 50, 100 years, that's it, that's me, right? And someone that looks at this, okay, wait a minute, this is one experience, this is just one passage, this is one life, I've been here before, and I'll be here again as many times as I need, right? You see that those people live in different worlds. Those two people are going to exactly the same challenges. Imagine two twins, and people that live together and experience very similar things, I mean, physically, right? In the same family. But one, see the horizon, the other doesn't. 
The other sees everything closing right there. In fact, there's a huge difference between how you approach life. In fact, I would say to you, nothing of Christianity makes sense if this is the only shot. Love thy neighbor? Who cares about the neighbor? I have only one life. Love your enemy? Kidding me? Kidding me? Who I care about my enemy? I only have one life. I'm never going to see his or her, this enemy again. I mean, it's just like, why should I care about you? I only have one life. I only have one moment. I only have this time. Right? And this is my chance. This is the only kid I'm going to have ever. This is the only family I'm going to have ever. This is the only experience. Only time I'm going to have 30 years old. Only time I'm going to be 40. Only time I'm going to be 50. Only time I'm going to be 15. <laughs> How important it is. And what if something goes wrong? What if your first boyfriend or girlfriend is horrible? My goodness. That's it. My only first time girlfriend or boyfriend sucks. And yet, this is how many people live. Right now, this is the mainstream understanding of our, our time. This is it. You only live once. There's so many songs. There's so many beautiful songs. Every time I, leave, I hear one of those, one of those like, uh, you know, oh, it's such an opportunity, right? You only live once. It's YOLO, right? There's even a YOLO, a, a, meme, a meme on the internet. It's like, you only live once. Do it. Oh, no, you don't. The difference is night and day, right? So be mindful that the people you have in your life that only believe that, that this is it. It's rational. Some of the decisions that can completely look destructive and uh, inappropriate, they make sense because that's the horizon. So bringing our society to a the understanding that this is not our only life, this is actually a part of a longer journey that has no end as, as far as we can tell in sight, but will keep us together for much longer than we imagine, is the key to understanding spiritual life. And uh, I'm going to say one thing today. We have been studying this. We have been mentioned for people that are in the study groups are going to be like, one more time I'm going to talk about this. But, uh, but I think it's, if you need something, like a hardcore evidence about reincarnation, I'm going to give you one. There's many. There's many. But I'll give you one. One. Right? I'm going to mention one. One of the things that I find the, the greatest evidence of reincarnation, in my opinion, that's really hard to explain without it, is the phenomena of savants. What are savants? So, kids that are born with a tremendous set of skills that take the vast majority of us a considerable amount of time to acquire. Right? I don't know if you guys, uh, uh, Bernadette mentioned a few uh, weeks ago, She's a teacher, and she brought, I got it. I, I, I liked it. She mentioned uh, Bloom's taxonomy, that I think uh, if you're a teacher or if you're into education, you might have heard about it. So this is a, a, a methodology that um, they use, educators use to teach their kids a new skill, right? And it goes for six steps. The first one, you have to remember something, right? Because you cannot use a skill you don't remember. If you forgot, like, like, like me now dealing with my new air fryer home, to, Full of buttons, right? I don't remember. If I don't remember, uh, you know, what they did the last time, it's a useless... I don't have that knowledge yet. I don't know. If you don't remember, you don't know. The first thing, the first step of knowledge, you have to remember it, right? You have to remember the steps. Then you, you start, um, you know, using... And eventually, when you know something really well, when you, like, you learn to play the basics of a guitar or a piano, but once you learn it well, you start the last stage is creation, it's creating. Because you know that so much, you are so good, like cooking. If you, if you, re when you begin, I'm, uh, you know, I'm still in the very early days of trying to get the thing done. But once you, you, you're good at, you, you, you know the ingredients, you create, you start creating your own dishes. You start changing recipes and, and putting your own taste. That's the creative, that's the top of the scale of any knowledge. 
when you really know something, you can create, right? And it takes time, repetition, you know, do things many, many multiple times to do it. But we have been doing this for thousands of years. We have been teaching our kids. We have a lot of experience. We have a lot of, a lot of knowledge and experience teaching people what to do. And we know how long it takes. How long it takes to play piano well. Anybody here play piano? My, young, my older one is starting to do it. And uh, he's kind of a... He, ha he has some talent in there, right? But it takes years and years. And there's people that, you know, practice piano for the whole life. And they're okay playing, but they're not at a higher level, right? Because it takes a mastery of the, the music, the, the listening, and the, the ear has to be properly trained. And all the physicals, all the muscles and movements mm -hmm. and, and the, the, the techniques to actually play is one of the most complex instruments we have, right? And that's why I love the case that I mentioned many times of Derek Pervicini, right? Pervicini, I think. Um, there's a lot of information about him online. And, and, and by the way, those savant cases are all over the place. You might have even in your family. But it's nice to have cases that are public, no, uh, uh, public known, so there's more information that you can go visit. Derek's case is one of those that there's a lot of information. There's a 60 Minutes made about, you know, about him a few years ago, where he was born blind, blind, and with severe autistic, aut autism, severe autism, in the case that he has a very difficult time to communicate. He can, he can barely dress himself, right? So severe, blind, severe autism, very difficult for him to communicate with you know, anybody, right? And I want you to look online and see him playing piano. He plays piano at a level um, that beyond professional. He can um, change the tone of music on the fly, on request. He plays piano at a level that the vast majority of us, even if we dedicate our whole life, if you decide now, no, my goal in life now is to be a great, the greatest piano player I can be, probably you're not going to reach the level Derek Provizzini achieved in this life, being blind, since birth, since birth, and autistic, he can barely communicate with you. He can barely say words. He cannot have a conversation with you. He cannot talk with you about anything. <clears throat> and he plays piano at the level. Nothing can explain that. He learned piano at another time. It wasn't now. It can't be now. He didn't learn now. When did he learn? It came magically to him? And some people come with all sorts of theories about how knowledge comes through. He learned that everybody learns. Like we all learn. Repetition. Remembering. Practicing. Right? It's the only thing is that for the savants, that didn't happen today. It didn't happen this life. To me, that's obvious, the most strong evidence of a time that was lived before this life. And there's many. If you don't like this one, there's many, many of those. If you just research it, you see, you find you one that connects with you. So, that is true. That is true. This is not our only life. We have lived before. Now, we relax. Okay, isn't it a... Okay, right? Let's just start looking at our lives as a journey now. Because now, every single improvement, every single way of learning, dealing with situations, dealing with all the facts of life now, become pondered and balanced to an experience that won't end when my body is gone. Do you see the weight adjusting? <clears throat> right? I know there's, we are facing huge challenges sometimes in our lives. There's always challenges. Because life is full of people that think different than us. And some people don't even like us. Or don't even like our group or whatever. 
So we, we create challenges, a heavy challenge for one another. But now, with the compass of a journey, you can put weights on things. One of the major challenges we're going to have in our, one of the most, the greatest epidemics we're going to face right now in our society is suicide. It's the challenge we have right now. Because it's a logical decision. If you only live once in your life, is, you think your life is lost. If you think there's a mistake that's unrecoverable and you only live once, it's a logical solution. We shouldn't be surprised. So every single one of us, I think, if we can just talk to the people around us and just raise the possibility, even if you don't believe it, the possibility that in the awareness that your life might be much longer than you think, the impact on people around us cannot be measured. Because it's one of the, it's the only logical when you say to someone, your life won't end. There's nothing you can do to end your true life. You can end your body, but you cannot end your life. That can be a life-saving experience to a lot of people. Right? Because they are being bombarded with a right now, live your life right now, or die experience. We have a role, I think in our communities, in our families, in our extended families, in our schools, and everywhere. To just, when somebody go YOLO, you say, maybe, maybe not. And who knows what that simple knowledge will do until we have science and we have the help from, you know. I think it's coming, I don't know, but I don't know how long, it may take 50 years, 100 years, we don't know how, how early or how soon Science will reach that, but we know that now. And I think this is the life-saving piece of knowledge for a lot of people around us. And it's, it happens to be, I think, I believe, the way things simply are. With that in mind, let's change, move on to our passes, right, and say goodbye. <laughs>